we're gonna talk about um, how to keep a wig on. I have a lot of people that'll come in and they'll buy a wig and they'll say, will it blow off my head? I'm so afraid it's gonna blow off my head. Um, is it gonna fall off my head? The answer is, can it happen? Of course. But let me show you what you can do to keep it from happening. I've never had one blow off my head, but I also use the water and the gel. So we're gonna take this little wig here and we're gonna act like this is a human head. And underneath here, there would be some hair. If there's no hair, we gotta talk a different game. But right now we're pretending there's hair under here. And she just brought, bought this wig. So what you do, one of the things you can do, I got a couple things. You take a bobby pin, you slide one up like this, and it, whoops, that, there went my earring. You slide one up like that, and you cross them. Basically what you're doing is you're making an X. Then you pull some hair back over that and cover it up. I recommend that you use the bobby pin that is the color of the hair. Do you have to? No, because actually you cover them up, you can't tell. You should not be able to see the bobby pin. So basically you're gonna take two bobby pins, curly side down. A lot of people think you slide a bobby pin uh, straight in because that's soft and smooth. You actually wanna put a bobby pin in curly side down and you're gonna crisscross them like an X. So you can do one here, one here, and one here, three X's. Or if you don't wanna do that, you can just go throughout the wig and anywhere that there's a gap and that it can catch hair, all you gotta do is go in there and push a bobby pin in there and then just cover it up. Be sure that you've gripped some of the hair if you have hair too. Another option is clips that you can sew on. Oh, sew in, sew in, sew in clips. These little clips right here, I call them break clips. There's a little soft thing here to keep it from breaking your hair and then you just snap it back and forth. You can actually take these and sew them with a needle and thread inside the wig and it'll, and then when you put your wig on, you just take this clip and you scoop some of your hair in there and you snap it. And you can put as many in there as you want. I generally will put two on the sides and two in the back. That's it. I don't do that very often. My wigs generally stay on my ladies really well because they're made of really good elastic. And also this wig in particular has a gripper. So if you're bald or you have hair, this rubber gripper helps to grip this wig. So it can be pulled off your head. Now, if you wear this wig for five years and you're still wearing it five years from now, it's gonna be all wonky on the inside because what happens on a wig is the inside of the elastic loosens and breaks, but the outside looks fine. It's kind of like your undergarments. You lose the elasticity and you have to replace them because of the elasticity, not because the garment's torn. That's kind of what happens with the wig. So you have bobby pins and you have clips that you can do this with if you have hair. So what do you do if you don't have hair? It happens, I deal with a lot of alopecia and sometimes I get some people in here um, that don't have hair. In fact, I just did a little eight-year-old girl uh, about three months ago, um, alopecia. She's a little gymnast. Um, it was really neat. She came in and did cartwheels down my hall because her wig stayed on just fine. Now, that's a little bit pushing it. I don't recommend that you go do cartwheels, but there is a tape. There's several different kinds of tapes. This is a clear tape and I carry it and it comes apart like so and it's it's round. So what you would do is you would take your wig. Okay, we're gonna take this off here. And you, you can use several pieces of this tape and basically you're gonna place it right here on your scalp. This would be on your skin. So you'll place the, the tape here and you could put several pieces on your scalp then you take and lay the wig on top of the hair and push it down. Tape is for just a daily use. You have to put it on and off every day. 
I've had some people that do it and it's just fine. But not, not normally. Normally, I only, uh, the tape, like the little girl that does the gymnastics when she goes to compete, she needs some tape. And you can also use a water soluble glue to glue the wig down. Some, you cannot saturate these with glue. It's just a little bit of tackiness. So really, the, the best way is the clips or the bobby pin. If you had a lace front and you just needed a little grip right here, you could also use tape or the little bit of the glue. And, and I'll show you how to do all that. I've never had anybody's wig fly off their head. I'm, I'm not gonna say it can't happen. I generally tell anybody if it's windy and you're walking outside, most of the time you're looking down because the wind's blowing in your face and dirt. So if you're looking down, the wind's coming this way, it's not most likely gonna blow, blow your wig off. Although I guess it could happen. Um, can it be pulled off your head? Absolutely. If you know, if you decide to go to box at the box at the bar, it may someone may pull it off. So I suggest that you're real careful as to, well, you know, it's it's a nice accessory. So first of all, I don't think anybody should be touching your wig. It's your personal hair. No one should even touch your hair without your permission. Something that I would like to touch on is glue down human hair wigs. They're very popular. There is people in my town that do them and they work. So what they do is they go in every week. It's a, a, it's a wig that they special order. It's a custom wig. It's a great wig. So the lady that I had the opportunity to work with, and she, these pictures are on my, in, actually in my gallery. She came in and I took the wig off her head and it was just gunked up with glue but the smell was horrendous, horrendous. So what she does every week is she gets her hair, her head washed once a week, cause there's not a hair on her head. Gets that, she leaves one wig and picks one up and glues another one down before she leaves. By the time I finished getting all the glue off her head, her scalp was so raw. I felt like if I touched it, it was gonna split. To me, that just is a breeding ground for infection and the bacteria that grows there is unbelievable. Now, that being said, this woman was like 80 years old. She's not gonna quit doing this. She's done it all her life and she's gonna continue to do it. I did. I refused to glue another wig on her. I actually got her a synthetic and told her she needed to wear that until her hairdresser could come back in from after having COVID. I'm very cautious on glue down wigs. Um, I personally do not do them. You can do it a little bit in the front and a little bit through the wig, but it needs to be taken off and wash. You need to wash that out that night. And you also need to be sure that the glue's not building up on the inside of the wig. That also has to be washed. So sanitation, gluing down wigs, very important to know what you're doing with that because you can you can get a bacterial infection in your on your scalp. You can get all kind of different things that um, can be very serious. I would like to hear from you what do you do to help keep your wig on? What have you done? Share your knowledge so that we can share with each other. You may know something that will help someone else. I wanna hear from you. Call me, Crown by Rachel, San Angelo, Texas. Let's get your crown fit.